Hi dear students, a warm good morning to all of you. Welcome to one more session on biomolecules and today we are going to talk about carbohydrates. If we are going to consider carbohydrates, uh, the level of it is different in the case of plants as well as in animals. If we go to consider plants, plants have around 30% of carbohydrates, whereas the proteins are limited to 5% and the lipids are limited to 1%. But in the case of animals, we have the reverse, like carbohydrates are only constituting about 1% uh, of the animal. But these carbohydrates, uh, regardless of their percentage or their percentage composition in plants and animals, they do serve a very important role both in plants and animals. Now, some of them serve as a source of energy and some of them could serve as food reserves in, as in storage regions of both of plants as well as animals. And uh, in the case of animals, you can see like skeletal structures are being formed or uh, are made using these carbohydrate moistures. And in the case of uh, certain skeletal joints, you can see that to lubricate them, we require certain carbohydrates. And to provide addition between the molecules and to confer the biological activity, carbohydrates are needed. So, the biomolecule carbohydrate, regardless of its percentage of composition both in plants and animals, gains much relevance in the living world. Now, what do you mean by this carbohydrate? Earlier, we used to say a carbohydrate is something which is a hydrate of carbon, that is, water hydrate is H2O and uh, carbon is of course C. So the hydrate of carbon that was the definition uh, which we used to give for the carbohydrates. But uh, structurally we can see that many of them are not just hydrates of, uh, carbo of carbon and now we use a broad definition that is they could be either polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones or their derivatives or any substances that yield any uh, one of these compounds on hydrolysis. That is, if you go to look into the carbohydrates, uh, they will either have aldehyde groups or ketonic groups or they are derivatives. And uh, if you take the whole pool of carbohydrates, they can be divided mainly into two groups. That is, the sugar type or the sweet type of carbohydrates and the non-sugar type ones which is not sweet in nature. Now regardless of their sugar nature or non-sugar nature, all of the carbohydrates will either contain an aldehyde group as well as some of them will contain a ketonic group. Now you might think what is that? A aldehyde group is CHO. And a ketonic group is the presence of a C double bond O alone. So, if this keto group is being found towards the end of a carbon chain, then it will const it will be attached to a hydrogen and that will constitute a aldehyde group. And if the keto group is being present in the middle of a carbon chain, that will result in the formation of a ketone group. Okay. So, a uh, Carbohydrate uh, will either have an aldehyde group or a ketone group, okay, and then what is it? Or there are derivatives of that could also be found within the body. So that's the definition of carbohydrates. And how are we going to classify them as sugars and non-sugars that we mentioned earlier? That is, if they are sweet in nature, we consider them as sugars. And if they are non-sweet, we consider them as non-sugars. Then, these sugars can be further classified on the basis how they divide and form molecules. Now, for example, if you take a carbohydrate and if you break it down or do a process of hydrolysis, if it gives you only one type of sugar, then you consider it or one sugar, then it is called as a monosaccharide. Now, glucose and fructose are good examples of it. Now, just look at the picture. This is a glucose moiety. That is, however you break down glucose, you will get this subunit as. And however you try to break down a carbohydrate, if you get 
the structure like this, a fructose moiety, then it is a monosaccharide. So the examples of monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, galactose. Uh, that is, when a carbohydrate has been broken down, if you get a single sugar, uh, let it be glucose, fructose or galactose, it could be different. Okay. Then it is considered, if you get a single type of sugar, then you call it as a monosaccharide. Now, in the second case, if you take a carbohydrate and if you do hydrolysis, if you get two monosaccharides, then you call it as a disaccharide. Now, have a look at this. You, I am taking sucrose and if I break it down, I can see that sucrose is made up of two moieties. A glucose moiety and a fructose moiety is being joined together by a glycosidic linkage to form one single moiety of sucrose. So, when I break down sucrose, I will get glucose as well as what? Fructose. So, if you break down a carbohydrate and if you get two sugar moieties, then you call it as a disaccharide. Now, the same is in the case of lactose. In the case of lactose, you are having what? Just look, you are having galactose as well as glucose. Glucose and galactose together constitute the, uh, the disaccharide called the lactose. So, if you break down a carbohydrate, if you get two sugars, then you call it as a disaccharide. Now, the other type of classification which we have is the oligosaccharides. What do you mean by oligosaccharides? Uh, if you break down a carbohydrate and if you get 3 to 10 monosaccharides, then you call it as a oligosaccharide. And raffinose is an, uh, is an example of a, a what? A oligosaccharide. In the case of uh, raffinose, you can see that raffinose is made up of three different subunits. That is, it is having glucose, fructose and galactose. See, in, in the previous slide, we had seen about glucose, fructose and galactose. But uh, in the case of raffinose here, when you have glucose fructose and galactose together, then it is referred to as the raffinose. Now, where is raffinose found? Raffinose is mainly being found in the plants. We will be dealing about the further details of that in details in coming sessions. So, uh, a case of oligosaccharide is if it gives you 3 to 10 monosaccharides, then it is referred to as a, a what? A oligosaccharide. And raffinose is one among them. And uh, I hope so you got an understanding. When you have glucose, fructose and galactose, that is called a raffinose. Earlier, we had what? Glucose, fructose and galactose, three were there. And two different combinations of that you found. Sucrose and lactose was being found. Glucose and uh, what? Glucose and fructose gave you sucrose. And glucose and galactose gave you lactose. And now you have glucose, fructose and galactose, three of them together, you get the, another combination called the raffinose, which is a oligosaccharide. Now, coming to the next portion of carbohydrates, like the non-sugars or the polysaccharides. Now, if you have the non-sugars and if these carbohydrates on hydrolysis give more than 10 monosaccharides, then you call them as polysaccharides and starch is an example of that now you can have a look on it now uh, starch this is an example of that is if i break down the starch i will get more than one carbo one monosaccharide okay i'm not talking about the type of it uh, that is the moieties or the number of units which we get when you break down one molecule of starch you will get different molecules of monosaccharides and cellulose starch and glycogen these are all examples of polysaccharides which we have now so this is a basic classification of carbohydrates uh, where you classify them as sugars and non-sugars and then again you classify them as monosaccharides disaccharides and oligosaccharides and also as polysaccharides based upon the number of monosaccharides they yield you upon hydrolysis now let's go into some basics of these if you go to consider the monosaccharides, they are being considered to be as simple sugars. And simple sugars, and they will either have an aldehydic group or a ketonic group. Okay. Or, and they will have uh, two or more hydroxyl groups also being found to be attached to it. And you can also find hydrogen, of course, to maintain the valency of it. And they have a general, a general formula of about CnH2 
H2N and ON. This is a general formula for the monies of monosaccharides. And uh, as I told you earlier, the most common monosaccharides is glucose and fructose. And if you go to represent their structure, you can see that glucose is consisting of how many carbons? Six carbons. You have to draw six carbons. And at the terminal end, when you have a key aldehyde group, aldehyde is CHO. So a keto is added and a H has also been added. And then uh, from down, you write OH on the same side. And then you reverse OH. And the remaining is being filled with H. So you get D glucose. Now, in the case of fructose, the structure is in such a way, same way. It is similar to that of glucose itself. It's a six carbon compound. You have uh, six carbons written. And, but remember here, fructose is a keto sugar, not an aldehydic sugar. So, at the second carbon, you have the keto group attached over here. And from down, it's just the same. OH has been attached and just reverse. So, the second carbon, you have the keto group attached in the case of fructose. So, in a monosaccharide, you can either have an aldehydic group or a ketonic group attached to it. So, I guess you got an, and this is a 5-carbon sugar, ribose. You know what is ribose? Ribose is a sugar which has been, is a 5-carbon sugar. Just look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And deoxyribose, deoxyribose, these are being found in the nucleic acids. So, a deoxyribose is where, see, here CH2 is, the oxygen is being removed. So, you have a deoxyribose. 2 deoxy -D ribose So, these are examples of some monosaccharides. Now, if you go to talk about disaccharides and oligosaccharides, I need to uh, give you an understanding. In some textbooks, you do come across uh, oligosaccharides as 2 to 10 molecules also, uh, excluding the disaccharides. So, uh, but keep an understanding that if you have 2 sugars or 2 monosaccharides being yield, you call it as a disaccharide. And if it is 3 and above, you consider it to be as oligosaccharide. So, if you write oligosaccharide, 2 to 10 molecules, you do find that in some textbooks. But in some textbooks, you also do find it as 3 to 10 molecules also. So, it's better to use the term 3 to 10, mole, uh, 10 molecules for oligosaccharides and 2 molecules for disaccharides. I just put it as 2 to 10 for you to realize the difference. So, in this, you can have disaccharides, as we mentioned earlier. You can have trisaccharides, as we noticed in the case of raffinose. And we can also have uh, tetrasaccharides, pentasaccharides, depending upon the number of monosaccharide units they are yielding to us. Now, let me just consider a simple case of a disaccharide. Now, in this case, you can see that two disaccharide molecules will get linked together if this is a monosaccharide and this is a monosaccharide these monosaccharides will join together by a condensation reaction by resulting in the formation of a glycosidic bond uh, and since here the one if the one or if one or uh, if one of one carbon monosaccharide is joining with the four of the another monosaccharide, it is called the one four glycosidic bond. And sometimes you can find one six also glycosidic bond. So depending upon which are the atoms. Now this is one and this is four. If you go to, um, uh, we will be learning about the structure in details. Okay. So the with the first carbon position of one monosaccharide is linked with the fourth. Uh, position of a carbohydrate, uh, carbon of the second monosaccharide and if a glycosidic bond is formed, it is called a, a 1 for glycosidic bond. So, a uh, disaccharide is mainly being formed by the condensation of two monosaccharide moieties. Now, as we have here, sucrose is, uh, is a condensation of two moieties called the glucose and fructose. Lactose is glucose and galactose and maltose is when two glucose moieties join together, they result in the formation of a maltose moiety. Okay, so uh, then of course, sucrose is mainly being found as a transport sugar. Lactose is being found in the milk and uh, of course, uh, we also have other type of uh, disaccharides present also. Now coming to the polysaccharide. 
in the case of polysaccharides i told you more than more than uh, 10 of course 11 at least 11 monosaccharide moieties are being liberated on their degradation or on their hydrolysis so and these polysaccharides they are the elements which usually co contribute towards the structural stability of a plant or an animal and they are not being found to be very sweet in nature now the most common example of that is uh, cellulose which has been found in the plant and it is made up of beta glucose moieties i will explain what is the difference between beta and alpha glucose in the when we come in the structural elements of it uh, now you just note it's just a difference in between the orientation of oh group okay if it's up you call it as one and if it is down you call it zinc now i'm not going to the details of it so a uh, cellulose moiety which has been made up of uh, beta glucose subunits with one for glycosidic linkages that is constitute the cellulose and in the case of starch it is made up of amylose and amylopectin it is a little more complicated which is made up of two different type of moieties and amylose is made up of alpha glucose subunits having one for glycosidic linkages and amylopectin is made up of alpha glucose subunits with having one alpha and one uh, one for one four glycosidic linkages and one six beta uh, one six glycosidic linkages we will be going to the details of the structures later so it's a amylopectin is a little more branched one which you have and then you also have uh, another polysaccharide called the glycogen which has been found in the animals which is made up of alpha glucose subunits where both that is also a little more branched structure and it is having <clears throat> what both one for glycosidic linkages and one six glycosidic linkages now just look into this some moieties now in the case of starch it has been made up of what uh, what it has been made up of amylose and amylopectin okay or let it be cellulose it has been made up of one type of uh, moieties or uh, one type of uh, moieties so in such cases you call them as homopolysaccharides but sometimes you can see that uh, a polysaccharide will be not made up of uh, one type of monomer it might be made up of different types of uh, uh, moieties then you call them as heteropolysaccharides so uh, polysaccharides also can be divided into homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides based upon the uh, type of uh, monomers which are being present in them so i guess you got an idea about what is a what is a case of a, a polysaccharides and you can see that a starch glycogen inulin cellulose pectin and all that they are coming under homopolysaccharides and high aluronic chondroitin sulfate etc which have been found they are heteropolysaccharides structural details of that we will be going into the details later so Carbohydrates, they play an important role within the living body. They could be served as energy sources. Uh, now, for example, we have glucose, which is traveled, uh, which has been carried through our blood to every cell to get energy. And we also have uh, storage units of uh, glucose as glycogen in the animal cells. And in the starch, we have, uh, in the plant cells, we do have the starch as a energy source and sometimes carbohydrates could serve as mechanical supports now for example cellulose uh, which is a glucose polysaccharide it is found in the plants and chitin which is uh, consisting of uh, n glucose amine that's a derivative of glucose um, that is mainly found in the prawn shells uh, crustaceans and all that and sometimes carbohydrates could also serve as molecular markers now for example as glycoproteins or glycolipids of the cell membrane now for the selective recognition of other cells and also for the identification of various blood groups also you can use carbohydrates. So the carbohydrates play a very important role within our body and uh, you got an understanding, I hope you got an understanding on what are the basic types of carbohydrates. We will be going into the details of the structure and further details in the coming sessions. Thank you for now.